Welcome to a presentation on exponential functions. Today we'll have a look at the algebraic form of an exponential function. We'll have a look at the graph of an exponential function. And we'll have a, a look at a couple of really key features. Uh, and one of the most important things that I want to get across to you is that exponential functions are associated with rapid growth. And that for very small increases in x for an exponential function, you, you can get very, very large increases in y. And that's, the, that, that's why sometimes you hear people talking about exponential growth, and they're talking about very, very rapid growth. So that's what we're going to be looking at. First of all, let's have a look at the, the definition of an exponential function. So an exponential function takes this form. We've got y equals b to the power of x, where b is some constant, and that constant is greater than 0. Now notice here that we haven't got x to the power of b. So for instance, if b were 2, like we've graphed here, y equals 2 to the x, uh, or 2 to the power of x, we haven't got x squared. We know what that looks like. y equals x squared, that's a quadratic function, so that's, that looks like a parabola. But here, instead, we've got b to the power of x. So x, which is our independent variable, is actually an indice here. Or another way of saying is that, is that x, the independent variable, is an exponent. And that's where it gets its name from. We call it an exponential function because the independent variable is an exponent here. And this, this functional form is associated with rapid growth, as we can see in this graph. Let's have a look at how fast this right-hand side of the graph, so on the right-hand side of the origin. We've sort of got this, this interesting feature where we've got this graph shooting up such that it looks like it's, it's going very rapidly um, upwards. For small increases of x, we have larger increases of y. Let's plot a few points here. So looking at the graph, looks like here we've got a point 0, x equals 0 and y equals 1. Here we've got x equals 1 and y equals 2. Here we've got x equals 2 and y equals 4. And if we were to continue up here, you, you can see that the reason we've got all these is we've got uh, at, at x equals 0, we've got y equals 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of x. Well, anything to the power of 0 is, is 1, so we've got y equals 1. At x equals 1, we've got y equals 2 to the power of 1. Well, that's just going to equal 2, because anything to the power of 1 is just itself. At x equals 2, we've got y equals 2 to the power of 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Let's, let's see what would happen if we said x equals 3. Now we can't actually see where x equals 3 is. It looks like it, this graph will probably continue upwards like this. But we'll have something like uh, y equals 2 to the power of 3. Well, it's 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. So here we sort of say 6, 7, 8 if this axis were to keep on going. So we'd have this point here. This would be 3 and 8. Let's have a look at x equals 4. At x equals 4, we get y equals 2 to the power of 4. That's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So that's 16. What about x equals 5? At x equals 5, we get y equals 2 to the power of 5. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. And let's do one more. At x equals 6, we're going to get y equals 2 to the power of 6. That's 2 and 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32, 32 times 2 is 64. So you can see that if, if we were to... If we were to graph this, we'd need a very big screen. We'd need a very big area. Uh, because just even if we have you know, x equals 5 or x equals 6, these values are associated with very, very large values for y. And if we continue this, if we were to put in, say, um, x equals 10 or x equals 15, these are relatively low x values, but they're associated with extraordinarily high y values. So you might even go away and put these into a calculator to see what we get. But we're going to get very, very 
uh, large values of y if we input these in. And so that's why we particularly talk about exponential functions or exponential growth as being associated with rapid growth. What it means is on the right hand side here is very small increases in x. So an increase from say 2 to 3 or 3 to 4 or 4 to 5. That can be associated with 4 units for y or 8 units or 16 units or 32 units. In other words, very, very small increases in x are associated with large increases in y. That's what we mean by rapid growth. The other interesting feature we have for exponential functions is that they have an asymptote. So let's have a look at the left portion of this graph, the portion uh, left of the origin. So it looks here as if this graph goes straight to y equals zero, but that's not actually the case. It's just because we haven't got graphing technology sophisticated enough to show that, that at no point does this graph actually touch the x-axis. In fact, we can see that it's, it's decreasing, but what actually happens here, and even if we were to graph this further to the left, is that every time we go from minus one to minus two, or x equals minus two to minus three, we get a decrease in y, but y never go, we never get a y value or a y coordinate of any of these points of zero. In other words, we always have positive y values, but they just get closer and closer and closer to zero. So let's, let's look at a few, um, a few coordinates here. So let's say at x equals minus one, we have y equals two to the minus one. Well, if we ever have, um, if we ever have something to the, the power of a minus, we can, put, we can put that as a fraction. These are, this is one of our, our important rules about indices. So this is the same as one half to the power of one. And this, this equals half. So y equals minus one, we've, sorry, x equals minus one, we've got y as a half. x equals minus two, we're going to have y equals two to the power of minus two. So again, if we've got anything to a, to a negative indice, we can always replace this, uh, this two with half. And say two here, so half times half is a quarter. About x equals minus three. X equals minus three, y equals two to the power of minus three. So this is half to the power of three. This is going to be one eighth. Notice that all of these are positive. So they're all positive, but they're getting, we're getting smaller and smaller values of y. So one quarter is half of one half, and one eighth is half of one quarter. We can easily plot these points. Let's consider at x equals minus one, y equals half. So x equals minus one, y equals half, that's this point. x equals minus two, y equals a quarter. x equals minus three, y equals one eighth. So as you can see, we're, we're getting decreasing values of y, but they never decrease completely to y equals zero. So if you were to put y, sorry, if you were to put x equals minus 10, or x equals minus a million, wouldn't matter how large we go, minus a million, we'd get a y value, we'd get a y value that is greater than zero. It will be very, very close to zero, but it will never reach zero. So consequently, what we can describe about this behavior is we could say, we could make a statement like as x goes to minus infinity, y goes to zero. What do we mean by this? What we, what we mean by this is as x becomes increasingly large and negative, well, the y values here, they get closer and closer to zero, but they never reach zero. So we say this by, the way we say this is, as x goes to minus infinity, y goes to zero. And that captures this behavior in this curve that for increasing, or sorry, for decreasing values of x, so as x becomes closer and closer to negative infinity, y becomes closer and closer to zero. The y coordinates here become very, very close to zero, but they never quite reach zero. And so this is called an asymptote. This behavior describes an asymptote. Specifically, the asymptote here is the line which this function tends to. 
and the asymptote, we can see that the line that describes where this function, it, the, the line that this function approaches as x goes to minus infinity, that line is the x-axis. Or another way of saying that, it's the line y equals zero. So consequently, the asymptote here is going to be the line y equals zero. So the curve is going to get closer and closer to resembling that line as x goes to minus infinity, but it will never touch or intersect with that line. Okay, well hopefully you've learned a couple of things here about rapid growth and asymptotes of exponential functions.